Welcome back. That was a good intro. To the What Do You Mean podcast. Yeah. Is that our intro <laughs> for the week? Until we have an intro, like an actual audio intro, I guess it's up to me to make it happen. So that's why I sang. Oh, yeah. We don't okay. have a jingle yet, so I just that's have to true. sing-tro us into the podcast. Sing-tro, huh? All right. Anyway. Should we tell them what we're doing today? We're recording a podcast. We're yeah. also eating cheese. That's true. That cheese board was amazing. Was well it? done. Yeah, I really very, liked it. We just ate a very last minute cheese board because I was in the mood for cheese this week. So. Which is never a bad thing. Cheese is like one of my top two favorite foods. And I'm pretty sure the first favorite food is pizza. So. No, it's ice cream. Okay. I'm going to need you to go back like four or five episodes now and listen to the episode (laughs) where I I literally asked you what your favorite food was and you said pizza. Didn't we have a whole discussion about ice cream being it, but not being it for like proper food? No, that was mine. When he literally doesn't even remember who he is. Am I just a ball of contradictions? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get canceled. Yeah, I like that cheese board a lot, actually. Mostly, I really like that spicy salami situation. Yeah, I got... So I was really craving... I don't know I don't know why it was so hard to find, but when we went to your boss's bonfire a couple weeks yeah. ago, they had like a hard salami, that and that's so, what I was it looking like for. It melted in your mouth. I couldn't find that anywhere. It was like... I typed in... Because we order our groceries because we don't like to go into the store. But so I was typing in like hard salami, thick cut salami, like all of these different keywords. And it was just pulling up like pepperoni and like (laughs) the thinnest salami you can imagine. And I was like, that's not the vibe. Yeah, we'd probably have to go to Publix to get that. Kroger's not bougie enough for thick cut salami. Sorry. Is that like gross to scratch the inside of your ear? I do it every day. So do I. But it feels like one of those. It feels kind of vulnerable. Yeah. To stick your finger in your ear. You know what I want to get is one of those little ear cleaner situations. Hmm? You know, they, it's like not, you know how you're not supposed to use Q-tips, but everybody does. Yeah, because it like apparently jams the wax like right. further in. Well, they make like this new thing. It feels kind of infomercially. It looks way too pleasing. Bonnie had something, my friend Bonnie. She'll tell you this if you ever talk to her. She has an overproduction of earwax. That's and she true. used to, I don't know if she still does, but when she would go to the doctor, they would clean out her ears. And one time, for whatever reason, in high school, I went to the doctor with her and they cleaned out her ears and it comes out in like chunks. It's like a water yeah. pick, basically, like what I've you use for that. your teeth. Mm-hmm. I think I could be completely wrong, but I just remember like the stuff falls out. It's nasty, bro. Like it's. That's whack. Although it's like nasty, but oddly satisfying because you're like, how, what's in my ears? I've never had that done before. Who knows what my ears look like on the inside? Yeah, I, I would love to get that done. All right. Your boy got hella earwax. Just a waxy ear. Oh. So anyway. (laughs) Anyway, tell us about your day. What's, what's been going on? What's new? What's... There's really on only one event that's on my mind for today. Is it the event yeah. that I had? Yeah, it's exclusively that because that overshadowed anything else that happened in my day. My day was not terribly exciting. I got to work, edited some short films, Yeah. talked to some people in England, just a regular day. Your day, however... I've had quite a day. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. My day was... Perfectly normal until about 3.20 p.m. It always is. Yeah. It always starts out as just a normal day. But I don't even know how to like go into this. Here's the thing though. I had to call 911 today. You got to start with the hook, baby. (laughs) Yeah, you got to you got to rope them in. But yeah, it was weird. I, I was working remote today. I work remote Thursdays, Fridays. And I... I feel like a lot of times during the day, I hear like random noises outside our apartment, like people walking by, shutting doors, whatever, just apartment things. But today was like odd. Well, it's more than odd. It was actually terrifying. But 
around like 12 ish, actually, when I went to go take a shower, I heard some like light banging and I was like, oh, somebody must be like putting stuff up on the walls or something. And that could be completely unrelated to what happened later. But I thought back to that earlier because I was like, I actually did hear banging earlier. But right around 320 ish, I was sitting at my computer in our office just doing work. And all of a sudden hear the most like intense, sporadic banging. And I don't even want to say like just banging, like banging on a door. It was like a person's body like slamming into things like it sounded like somebody was like hitting walls like with their body like running into things and I also heard like running like footsteps and I heard a girl like yelling and at first I was like maybe this girl's maybe somebody's laughing like I couldn't really make out what it was but then like right because that does happen like people running up the stairs and like messing with each whatever yeah So I was like, okay, this all happened in a matter of like 10 seconds that I went from like curious to scared. And so like at some point in there, I realized like, wait, whatever that is, it sounds like frantic and scared. And it sounded so close to our door. Like we live on the third floor and it sounded like it was right on our floor, like right outside our complex. So I immediately like go into panic mode and I was like, somebody's like, hurt or somebody's being chased or like something well, bad is happening and what? you heard them yelling for help yeah is the i was gonna thing. say that after oh, okay but yeah at first i just heard like screaming and as i was like i was like do i call ty who do i call and so then i heard the screaming i could hear the word help like i could make out that word while the person was screaming and it was like I have never felt like a shock through my system like that, where I was like, somebody's getting killed or hurt or I don't know. But at the same time, I was like, I'm sure as hell not going to open my door. Like, right. I I don't know. Like, what do you do? And so I immediately, this is a scary thing too. I looked at our door. It was unlocked. So I run over there, lock the door real quick. And then I run into our closet and I called 911 and at this point screaming is still going on banging is still going on and I was like this has lasted way too long to be like nothing and so I call 911 the lady answers and it's just like I'm sorry but like 911 is not like it is in the movies where they're just like well at least your experience today wasn't yeah, but I've had to call 911 before, and it was a little similar, I think. Oh, really? Where it's just like, like, obviously, just the usual, like, 911, like, what's the address of your emergency, which I like that they start out with that. So I just, like, gave my address real quick, and then the lady was like, what's your phone number? And I was like, can you not track it from this right. call? Like, what if I was literally being held at gunpoint, and I have to answer all these questions? Like, I get that they need this information, But also it's like, can they not track where I'm calling from? Can they not? It just, it kind of sucks that you have to be able to like give all that information when you're in literally an emergency situation. Luckily, like I wasn't the one in that other person's situation. I don't even know. I still don't know what happened. They wouldn't have been able to just like answer all those questions on the phone. But anyway, so I'm like giving her my address, telling her what's happening And obviously I didn't go outside to actually look, but I was like, I hear like banging, somebody screaming for help. Like I, I, it sounds like somebody's being chased. I'm not really sure. And I get that that probably wasn't like super valuable information. Anyway, I'm on the phone with this girl hiding in my closet. Luckily, like we have kind of like layers to our closet. So there's a, like you go into our room and then you go to the bathroom and then you go to the closet. So I had like shut the bathroom door, locked it, turned off the lights went in the closet, shut the door, hid. And so, because I don't know, like, if somebody's being chased, I don't know if somebody's just, like, on the loose, like, ransacking people. Like, I have no idea. And I'm also home alone, so I'm, like, terrified. And the lady was like, okay, we'll get somebody out there. And I was like, okay, please hurry. (laughs) 
And at this point, like the screaming and stuff had stopped. But like right before we got off the phone, it started again. Like the girl was screaming for help again. Things were banging again. I heard running and I was like, hi, okay, it's still happening. So like y'all could hurry. That'd be great. And she was just like, okay, great. And I realized she never asked me like what my building or unit number was. So I was like, would the cops even know where to go? And so like before we hung up, I was like, I'm in building seven, by the way. And she was like, okay, we'll have somebody out there. Spoiler alert, no one ever came. So yeah, glad to know I can really rely on our, it's just, I'm like so mad thinking about it because like I get maybe it wasn't an immediate threat, but like he could have been in like really serious danger. And like, why would you want, why would that not be, I get that they have so many calls and I'm not the only one with an emergency, but it's like, I don't feel like I was taken seriously at all. And I asked her, I was like, is there any way you could like stay on the phone for a sec? Like, I'm just, I'm kind of like scared right now. And she was like, no, we have other calls. And I was like, okay. (laughs) Right. Which like, maybe I am just unaware and I don't know how it works, but I feel like that's their job is to stay on the line with people and make sure that they're safe. Somebody came in and started like stabbing me. I'm sorry. That was my whole, like, you called me and I was like, okay, I don't care if you're talking to me or your parents or 911, yeah. but you need to stay on the phone with someone yeah. because I need to know that you are okay and someone needs to know what's going on. Yeah. I so. think that was like, that was the worst part of all of it. It's like, I've never been... And again, this was not a direct threat to me, but I didn't right. know what was happening outside our doors. So I was just like terrified and not sure like if somebody was going to try to break in, if somebody was going to start shooting, like I had no idea. Right. And so just to think that like I called the one place that I thought would be able to like quickly provide help and like care about my situation, knowing that like help literally never came. Yeah. Like it no one came so that just like that scares me for if there was like a legitimate emergency where like somebody's like about to hurt me and I just I don't know I hope if something bad was happening I hope whoever that person was is okay like who knows I ended up calling so I ended up calling the leasing office because I was like they're closest to me right now so I'm just gonna call them And the girl answered the phone already so much sweeter than the 911 operator. I told her the situation. I was like, this is a little weird, but I'm currently hiding in my closet because something like, I think I heard something. I think somebody's getting hurt. Like, I'm not really sure. Can you have somebody come like, check it out? And she was like, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. The maintenance guy's like on his way over here and I'll have him go right there. Right. And I ended up hearing... I've met the maintenance guy before and he's amazing. So like, I love that they were able to actually send someone. Yeah. But I ended up hearing them coming up. Apparently they knocked on our door, but I was hiding in the closet and was not about to open the door for anybody knocking. So I didn't answer it. I ended up calling back a little bit later and they told me they were like, yeah, we came up and checked and like knocked on your door to see if you could kind of point us in the right direction. But we didn't see or hear anything. We like listened in to people's doors to see if we could hear anything going on. Didn't. So it's just kind of spooky because like they didn't yeah. see anything. And I'm like, and they were like, did you call the police? And I was like, yeah, I tried. I guess no one ever showed up. So like, Right. To me, it's one of those things where, like, maybe they drove by, but we're an apartment building. So there's multiple levels. Anything right. could be happening. Like, and the frustrating thing is, I would have been willing to chalk it up to, like, oh, they did a drive by to check on things, see if there was screaming or, you know, because you would have heard it from the road mm-hmm. if there was screaming going on. So, like, I would be willing to chalk it up to that if. But you ask the leasing office if they saw any cops come through and they didn't, which means no one ever showed up. Yeah. You have to drive right past the leasing office and everyone notices when a cop pulls in. Mm-hmm. Like that's something from working in service. Every, like it could be the busiest store on the planet 
You notice when a cop parks in your parking lot. Yeah. You notice when they drive past. You just do because we're all aware of it. We're all like a little scared we're doing something wrong, even though we're not. Mm -hmm. So it's, I'm frustrated because I left work the second you called me, or I guess I called you. I drove all the way home, which took 40 minutes with traffic and everything. And if something had happened, like, I got there as fast as humanly possible for a civilian. And the people that are supposed to come when you call them with an emergency never even showed up. Yeah. That, like, I can't even... If I think about it too much, I'm going to start crying because that's just, like... That's just, like, so fucked up. (laughs) Yeah. How could you... Like... Who else can you rely on to, like, make you feel protected if not literally law enforcement? <laughs> right. Like, that's literally when what they're No they're one's even going to come. Do. And I know that's not, it's not an individual cop's fault. It's just, like, why is it that the system, was it that lady? Was it, I, I don't know. Right. Did she just, like, get the wrong address? Did she, I don't know. Like, and I don't know if, maybe I'm stupid, but... I feel like it's it's 2022. If I call, that should give them all the information they need to at least get there. Yeah. Because you can track a phone. You can, they have my number the second I call. Why do I need to verbally give you all this information when I'm yeah. in danger or right. somebody else near me definitely is and I'm yeah trying to be proactive, but it's also like they don't care really unless there's like an active emergency and you're like, that point it's almost like too late like wouldn't you want to try and be like i don't know the thing that frustrates me is that he accidentally set off our home alarm like what three months ago maybe Mm -hmm. and it took them three minutes to be knocking on our door they literally within 10 minutes there were two cops at our door two cops at our door like hey like we wanted to make sure everything was right so (laughs) we already decided Hopefully something like this doesn't happen again. But if so, I'm just going to set off our home alarm. For sure. Because the cops will get here infinitely faster than they would if you call 911, which is very unfortunate. But yeah, it's yeah, we're it's one of those things where like, ironically, we were testing or we were talking about getting a like a ring camera today before that happened. did I, was that because I told you earlier that there was a lot, like a lot of banging outside? I think I texted you earlier and said, like, there's a lot of banging going on outside. And maybe that's when you said, like, yeah, we need to get a ring camera or something. But that was like hours in between. That's what I'm saying. I remember I, at the beginning of this, I said, like, I heard banging yeah. earlier in the day and didn't really think anything of it. I don't know. Regardless, though. So. Yeah. The other thing that... I will say, let's see, where was that? Now I'm I'm looking. We back text a to lot during out. the day. Oh yeah. I did say that earlier. You did. You said at one thirty. You said I'm kind of scared. Lol. There's a really loud banging outside. Like not right outside our door, but someone's. Maybe it's nothing. I said, what the fuck? Please stay inside. We need a ring camera or something. Yeah. And, and then I was, sent you a ring camera. And then three hours later, two hours? It was like hours? two hours later that it was like super intense. Again, I don't know if those things were related, but yeah, it literally scared the shit out of me. It's scarier because I still don't know what happened. And so I don't know if right. maybe I heard wrong. Maybe it was like some kind of fluke or some kind of joke. Or if right. it was real. And now right. I'm like, is it our neighbors? Like, is, is somebody here, like, scary? I just, I don't know. Yeah. I will say the other weird thing is when you texted me, you said, it's an emergency. Well. And I was like. I was scared you weren't going to think it was an emergency. Because well, but my thing was, what what is? Oh, because I tried to call you. And it never rang. It went straight to voicemail. So I thought you hung up on me. Oh no! It like never I thought, maybe rang. I thought maybe you were in a meeting or something and just hit end. And I was like, I need you to pick up. I see. It took me a second to respond to you because I was like, What is she talking about? Because it never even rang for me. 
And so I was like trying to figure out what was going on. And then you were like, I called 911. Like, I'm. I think I actually said, I called 922. You did. And <laughs> I thought you were talking about something else. And I was like, what is going on? And then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, that was a situation that it's very scary and very much like, I don't know. I don't even want to speak to like, because if something bad was happening, obviously I will not know the level of fear that whoever that person was was experiencing. Right. But just like being on my end of things, like I've never had that type of like fight or flight situation happen. Right. Where I was like, am I about to die? Like, am I yeah. literally about to? I don't know. Yeah. I don't it was know. very odd. Like, it was just like a weird afternoon because of all of that. Like, I was at work and then you haven't been to our office, but it's very open, like a very open main floor. And so me and both of my bosses are just down there. So I call you and then they have no context and I didn't tell them I was calling you. And I'm just like, okay, are you in the closet? Did you lock the door? Is the alarm set? I'm on my way. They're probably As like, I'm packing um, up stuff. And then I muted you for, I was like, okay, I need you to stay on the phone with me. And then I muted it. And I was like, I got to go and just grabbed my shit and left. They were like, okay, sounds good. Yeah. And I texted them on my way home and let them know a little bit of what was going on. It was a very stressful thing. Mine was nowhere near as stressful as yours. And yours was nowhere near as stressful as whoever that person was. And I we really, really hope they're okay. But yeah, it was just weird. And the 911 not existing for us was the icing on the cake. Yeah, that was just a very, I don't know. That was a very telling experience for me. But yeah. anyway, the real tragedy here, well, assuming there was no other real tragedy, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, assuming everybody is okay. Yeah. For I us. To, I had to cancel my Botox appointment, and I'm sad. Yeah, you were looking forward to I that. I was getting so hyped for it. It was my first one. I was going to go get these non-existent yet wrinkles under control. It's preventative, you know? Start the anti-aging while you're young. Yeah, I don't know shit about that. I don't either, really, because it was going to be my first one, but I literally, I didn't want to be rude. So while I'm hiding in the closet behind our long hanging clothes, I'm literally like wedged in between the wall and all of our clothes hanging. I'm like texting the Botox place, like, hi, I'm so sorry to do this. I'm in a little bit of a sticky situation right now. Is there any way I could reschedule without getting charged? <laughs> a sticky situation? You, like, hunched and squished between, and like, then, our coats. Yeah, and you know, like, I know how that looks. Like, I'm supposed to be there in 30 minutes, and I'm like, oh, something came up. Like, I know that that looks sketchy. Right. So I had to respond back and be like, I think I said like something came up and then in parentheses, as in I had to call 911 and I'm a little scared to leave my house right now. And so then I and didn't get a, I didn't get a response back. So like 20 minutes later, I was like, well, shoot, I hope they saw that because right. I'm going to be like a no show. And I, that, that's just like really rude. So I'm still hiding. Still don't know if I'm going to get killed, but I called them. And because I had texted them before. Right. So I called them this time and somebody answered and I was like, hi, I just sent a text. I'm so sorry. Can I reschedule? And the lady was like, oh, my God. Yes. Like, all good. I hope everything's OK. And I was like, yeah, same. I hang up. I'm literally in like the pitch darkness in my closet. That was I will say I didn't laugh because the situation was so high stress and you you were in tears when I came in but the fact that I came into a locked bathroom door and when you opened it it just was darkness I didn't want I didn't want it to look like I was there that's understandable the irony of it is that we leave that closet light on about 80 percent of the time when we're not here yeah but I respect the commitment to secrecy and staying hidden 
Yeah. Although I don't know many people that lock the door when they leave their apartment. But should I have left it unlocked? No. But you Yeah, like but he, uh, that's the thing. It's like there's no time to think. I'm yeah. just trying to put as many barriers between me and bad guys as possible. Yep. So that's what I did. Yep. And you did great. And I'm very like very genuinely I'm very very proud of the way that you responded and handled it and the thing is though like what else was I gonna do you don't have a choice when things like that happen it was like the only option the only person I can call is 911 the only thing I can do is hide because I'm sure as hell not gonna walk out of here like yeah the only thing I can do is sit here and hope nothing worse happens and those are all the things I did so well Regardless, you did good. Well, thank you. In, we've been, the, in spite of the fear. We've been talking about this for a long time. We should get the old spirits up with some conversation about weird things in Christian culture. Am I right? Nothing Nothing brightens my day. Like talking about like, weird stuff that yeah. Christians do. And <laughs> this is coming from two people who are Christians. So... Who, I feel like we can speak to this because, you know, it's like you can make jokes about yourself, but if somebody else made these jokes, they're like, well, that's not true. I was going to say, honestly, if other people made these jokes, I'd be like, you're right. (laughs) Yeah. That's the thing is like, I think we're both at a point where a lot of our friends in Nashville were raised Christian. I don't know that tons of them are Christians. Or consider themselves Christians, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I have a bunch of friends that would kind of identify as agnostic or unpracticing Christian. You know, something like that. I think a lot of people in Nashville have a history with Christianity and are very aware of it. Because a lot of people here were raised around it or in a church or... You know, something just because it's the South and there's so much of like a Christian culture ingrained in the culture. Yeah. So people make fun of Christians a lot here. Yeah. Because there's so many people that are Christian, were Christian, or are just around it a bunch and are like, what the hell? You guys do some weird stuff. Yeah. And we being both raised very Christian and now being like Christian. Yeah. That we still very much like believe in God and have relationships with him. It's just sure. not, I don't know. It's not, it's not what I grew up around. Like the way yeah. I am now. I'm not like, I don't know. I once heard Maddie Healy. The, <laughs> the wise words of Maddie yeah. Healy. I mean, I. I'm the opposite, but I heard Maddie Healy say in an interview once talking about the difference in like how he writes versus how he used to write. He was like, I used to be an atheist and now I'm an atheist. Okay. So it's like, I used to be a Christian and now I'm a Christian. Now I'm a Christian. Yeah. That's how, like, I, it's the least informative way to explain my religion or my religious beliefs but that's how i would explain it yeah we're like i used to be in the youth group leading worship missionary and now i'm a christian so yes we're christians so yes i feel like we can we can talk about these jokes and it's all lighthearted and fun Please don't take offense to any of this. I don't think anybody will, but like, because it's not, no. none of these things are like controversial. They're just like, if you really think about it, they're kind of funny. And that's all this is. It's just supposed to be lighthearted, yeah. fun. We're not getting into any deep like theology things. So bear with us. Christian or not, this shit's funny. Okay. Yeah. And I'll say like, this kind of came out of like last week's episode talking about traditions yeah, it sparked there's, a conversation. There's for some sure. weird things. Like, I have one that's not even on here, but like advent calendars. I'm not going to lie to you, Ty. I don't really get it. Like, no, Me not neither. Nay. And I, I don't did even it really know life. what they are. 
Okay. So hear me out. Hear me out. I have a technically, question. we kind of have an advent calendar on our wall. No, I know we do. Right. I know. I know what they are like physically, but For I'm like, sure. low key, what is advent? I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> I yeah, don't that's know. fair. Do you want me to explain it to you? Honestly, yeah. Give so me a- each candle, it's it's supposed. To, have you seen the like candles that go with it? I thought that was Hanukkah. Oh, that's uh, something else. But candles that's like involved. a menorah for sure. That's okay. A menorah. See, I that's didn't know candles, candles were involved with. Like, I didn't. I didn't know. Okay, I didn't know. So a lot of the time, Advent will include like four candles, and they're like in a wreath. And then there's a center candle. I can picture it. I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? And each one has to do with like an aspect of God and also the prophecies about him coming to earth in the form of Jesus. And we're just over here moving a star around different numbers of the calendar and eating candy out of the little flaps. Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. Checks out. Yeah, it's, I don't know enough about it to be like. That's why I never, I never knew what it was until like, yeah, we're doing our own like advent calendar this year. And I'm like, I don't get it, but it's fun because there's candy. Yeah, that one for me, it's like. It's just supposed to be cute. It's a countdown till Santa Claus gets here, baby. Till Santa Claus comes. Santa. (laughs) But like as a kid, we read these books every single night for all of December leading up to Christmas. Oh. And we would like light the candles every night. Oh. So like yeah, for the I first never week, knew what that was. Yeah, for the first week we would only light one candle and then the second week we'd light two and the third week we'd light three and fourth. And then on Christmas Day we would read the last chapter of the book and light all five candles. And it was like this whole thing to like talk about the birth of Jesus and why it was important and all of that stuff. Did they do that in like the Bible times or is that just a tradition that's kind of been birthed from? That's a great question and I wish I had a good answer for you. Cool. All I right, don't well. know. I want to say it comes from Old Testament prophecies and stuff, but I'm not positive on that. So don't quote me on it. I won't. Good. I will admit that it's kind of weird. Kind of weird. Like I- I'm all about it. It's just like, if you really sit down and think about it, like, what are we doing? Yeah. And I mean, it goes back to last week's thing of traditions that I'm like, some of these are weird. Yeah. Why does that exist? Precious moments. I know like the people that, that know, like, if you know, you know. So I feel like I said that and people are like, precious moments. Yeah. 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 We like unlocked a few people's memories and, and other people, people are Googling it right I now. Know, are like, so like, what, what is... is that? Okay. I actually have one to go with this, which is funny. Well, we got to talk about what it is. I know. So precious moments are these little porcelain statues of like children. Let me, let me They're just like read cartoon the, children. Almost. Let me read the description. Precious Moments Company Incorporated is an American catalog order company that sells giftware. The company was initially formed in 1978 by the illustrator Samuel J. Butcher as a licensing company. And yeah, they just have like merch that's cute and it's kind of become like thing. It's just oh, like random yeah, okay. like, oh, you get a Precious Moments figurine or there's a cute little Precious Moments painting or like. Yeah. It's like a See, style. It's in like my a, experience, it's only the little like figurines and they just are literally children. Look, there's a calendar. Acting important moments, like precious moments. Yeah. And so. They're cute, I guess. You guys, they're expensive. They're so expensive. Have There's... I told you the story of my mom's precious moments? Yes. Tell it again in a minute, though. Okay. Here's the thing. Precious moments has become something like, it's just weird. Like, they have a University of Alabama Crimson Tide football fan precious moments figurine. And it's two precious moments characters sitting on a couch, looking at a screen, watching the Bama game with a foam finger. Guess how much money it is. They're not it's not even the football players. They're just watching it. Oh, they're precious moments football players. They're like <laughs> I got to see this. 
Wait, guess how much money it is first. 130. Oh, dang. You guessed too high. It's too 110. High. Yeah. Still insane. It is wild. Yeah. It's just like this weird thing in Christian culture that's like, yeah, like everybody had a precious moments thing as a kid, yeah, at least. At least one. There was an ornament that I had that mm-hmm. was one from like my very first Christmas ever. Yep. It's from 1997. Like it's like a little boy riding a Christmas train. Yep. Yeah. I think I had like a personalized Precious Moments book or yep. something. Yeah, that was a thing. Yeah. Because anyway. I think my sister had one, my little sister. Yeah. Tell us the story of your mom's Precious Moments figurine. Oh my God. So my mom, it wasn't just one. It was <laughs> so many. And that's the trauma. My mom like collected them. She had, she had this thing in our kitchen. No, our dining room in my childhood house. And it had like a bunch of shelves in it, but it was all one box kind of. And each shelf had a different precious moments or two on them. So they were like, I want to say like 10 to 15 precious moments on this. Precious moments figurines. Figurines, yeah. So they're all like porcelain, very fragile little things. So my mom had like 10 or 15 of these in this spot. And some of them were very important. Like, I think people would give them to her at important moments in her life. At precious moments. Mm, I see you. Like, I think there was one when I was born. I think most of the kids born. I think one of them was when they got married. Okay. Anyways. So these were all like, she was like collecting all these literal precious moments personified in these porcelain figurines and your boy was sweeping the dining room one evening because it was my job that week and i was crushing it for the record you were crushing more than just the sweeping unfortunately spoiler alert i was trying to sweep underneath the table So I was at like a weird angle, really dipped down low. That broom handle found a a solid seating with the box on the wall. And I took off the whole box, the whole thing, giant wooden box nailed onto the wall, came up and off with all of those precious moments on them. And they exploded across that dining room and I burst into tears instantly. I was like, I want to say I was nine. Pretty traumatizing. I knew the second that it happened that my mom was going to cry and that's what did it for me. And so I, yeah, I was like crying. Uh, My mom She's so sweet. She like came in and was like, are you okay? Are you okay? She thought I was like cut or bleeding or something. And I was just like sobbing because I knew she was about to be sad. She didn't really care for the first reaction, which was very sweet of her. And then her and my dad sat at that dining room table and like glued them back together. Most of them. Some of them were fine. Some of them, it was like minimal damage, and but there was like one specific one that I remember that was really important to my mom. I think it was the one from their wedding. Makes sense. And it was really rough. And my dad like glued the tiniest pieces back together for hours. That's tough. It was awful. It's still one of my least favorite memories. I really feel for both of you in that situation because that is truly sad on both for it's, both parties. Yeah. But, it but also, at the same time, like precious moments. What were it those? It speaks <laughs> to the absolute chokehold precious moments has <laughs> on Christians. Yeah. Right. So true. They're literally porcelain things that yeah. hold that much weight. Which is crazy because currently I could not imagine owning a porcelain thing of any sort. Me looking for one porcelain thing to prove you wrong. I mean, like we have yeah. vases and things. And like our but plates like, and stuff, but that's porcelain, right? A plate. Maybe. But 
like I can't imagine us having just a figurine as a decoration. Yeah, that literally you know? like cracks me up. Another thing that my mom had that I feel like is it's not uniquely Christian, but Christians love them. I think willow tree. I like know what you're talking about, but I don't. They're like similar vibe as precious moments. They're little figurines of different experiences in life and moments, but they're like carved from a tree. Oh, my mom, you've seen them because my mom has them. Your mom's going to uh, listen to this and be like, okay, uh, cool. So this is just roast Michelle day, I guess. No, no I think mean, it's you like, guys are coming, <laughs> coming it's one of those things everything. that it like, it makes so much sense in her house. And in like all the houses I was around growing up, they all had willow tree things and they make like the angel for your tree. You can get a willow tree one. Like you can get ornaments you can get all kinds of things but it's like maybe that's just an older generation thing that we don't understand yeah maybe maybe i'm being mean yeah maybe that's all this episode is it's us being mean to christians it's all a joke we can all laugh it's fine god laughs i'm sure i'm sure he thinks some things are funny yeah we crack jokes all the time yeah Lifeway, anybody? <laughs> what if we just left it at that and just kept moving? I thought, isn't Lifeway like a publication? Pretty we don't sure have Lifeway in Colorado. So in my head, it's Family Christian Bookstores or Mardell. Lifeway is a Christian bookstore around here. I think Mardell and Lifeway are the same company, actually. Yeah, probably. I could be totally wrong, but yeah. A Family Christian Bookstore, like if you think about it, it's cute. Like I remember I would, we, we had a Lifeway near our house growing up and it's literally just like all Christian based books, Bibles, kids books, little gift item, little like things that go on the wall that have like Christian quotes on them and Bible verses and all this stuff. It's cute and whatever. And especially like when you grow up and you are Christian, it makes so much sense to have a Christian bookstore. Maybe it's an American thing. Like, I wonder if you went to other countries where Christianity isn't the dominant religion, if they would have like, I don't know, a family Shinto bookstore. Yeah, it just feels weird because like, or something. there's already bookstores that have a Christian section, like a religion section. They right. have like a lot of different books for a lot of different religions. So it's just kind of funny when you think about it. That there is yeah. an entire store dedicated to just Christian books and movies and Yeah, I things. would truly, the closest thing I can compare specifically a Christian bookstore to is a comic bookstore. Because like a regular bookstore is 95% books, you know? They don't, they might have board games or something and maybe like a tiny DVD section or have something. Have you ever been to Barnes & Noble? Yeah. They got it all. You need to go there sometime. But I mean like small bookstores, right? Right. Most of the time they don't have a ton of other stuff. But a comic book store is going to have action figures. They're going to have posters. They're going to have like you can buy the hammer that Thor uses. You know, like stuff yeah. like that where it's way more like – Everything that can be found in a comic book, you can also get there. But the main selling point is the comic books themselves. Family books, a family Christian bookstore, which in Colorado is the name of the bookstore. Real know. original. Real original. They don't leave anything to the imagination there. It was like I'd go to the back to get like my Bible man lightsaber and Veggie Tales movies and all of that stuff, you know? Mm hmm But also they had, you know, whatever the latest Beth Moore Bible study was probably. Beth. Good old Beth. Our girly. Doesn't she live here? Maybe she's I Texas. So. I brought up two things that are weird S subliminally. Bible Man and Veggie Tales. Yeah. I was going to segue into Veggie Tales after that, but I think we can maybe just loop it all in. It's just like Christian characters that yeah. kids like grow up watching and loving. Like, I think most people have heard of Veggie Tales, but like literally 
vegetables that teach you about the Bible <laughs> and songs that you literally have in your head for the rest of your life. Yeah. And it's and like, like songs that are not even Christian. Like, right. where's my hairbrush? Right. And there's no cheeseburger. I'm sorry. <laughs> they were literally just like breaks in the educational thing to keep the kids hooked, I guess. Uh, it kept us hooked. All oh, right. It was great. I'm still hooked. Barbara Manatee, anybody? An absolute banger. <laughs> Barbara Manatee, you are the one I love. One I love. Yeah, it's bizarre. Also, like Adventures in Odyssey. Remember those? Mm -hmm. Those were like audio the tapes, that, yeah. weren't they? Low key, though. They walked so podcasts could run. Yeah. Well, I mean, they had movies too, right? They did have movies, and I only really listened before, to the tapes, though. Yeah, before Adventures in Odyssey, there was. Like the radio dramas of the twenties through. Gosh, radio drama. Seven. That's insane. Yeah, that was like the OG, like before movies. But the point remains: Adventures in Odyssey kind of ripped. I don't really remember much of it, honestly. Low key, we should get back on that. All if we I go on a a road trip ever, that was what we would do: is we would get them from the library on like CD or tape, depending on what era. And you need to stop. It's hey, only going to get worse. I don't tell you how to live your life. Monica's ripping up her sock. But yeah. I only remember a very specific episode where like some kids were like making idols out of things. And one mm. of the kids was like, no, you're making, you're making false gods. And it was like <laughs> this whole thing. I was like, That's oh shit. Fine. Yeah. There was also, there was a snow day episode that was great. It was nice. like a war story where he was just trying to get these cookies to his grandmother's house. But they were like getting attacked by snowballs. They had to like sled down some things. It was great. But there was also like super creepy episodes. There was a whole spy arc where they didn't take place. It didn't take place in Odyssey anymore. Hmm. It was with Mr. Whitaker's son. It was bangers. Anywho. Moving right along. Did you ever go trunk or treating as a kid? Trunk or treating trunk. is so specific to maybe not even just <laughs> Christian culture, but like religion. Huh. Trunk or treating doesn't what, happen. Can, can you explain that? Yeah. Trunk or treating is an alternative option to trick or treating, more commonly okay. known. Basically, you trick or treat in a church or organization parking lot and people set up their cars as like stations. So okay. you go to different cars Word. to get candy or prizes or whatever for okay. Halloween. So and it's just like it's very common at churches and stuff because a lot of people believe that like Halloween is like kind of. Like a satanic or right, so it's just like, like a Christians very worldly holiday. The holiday. Yeah, Got it's it. It's like just trying to make it more. Right. So I don't know that we had trunk or treating exactly, but they would put up like a family friendly version of a haunted house. Yeah, like a festival. Like a yeah, like a Halloween festival. Like maybe in the parking lot. But of they a call church. it fall festival. They don't call it Halloween festival. Yeah, do they? yeah. Or like. Or they would harvest. Like, I was trying to think of an alliteration, but like they would yeah. call it something like cutesy and yeah, like harvest hangs or something. Yeah, yeah. Or it would most of the time in Colorado, and maybe just because it's freezing, like it's always snowing. It was inside of the church. For a lot of the time. And yeah, it was like a, you'd still dress up. There were games a lot of the time. There was, yeah, like a festival kind yeah. of thing. And um, I'm not saying this is like, I'm against this or I think it's stupid or whatever. No. It's just like, it's kind of funny that it's like. Yeah. And it's a, a safe way to do something with your kids. So like, I'm totally. into it. I'm for it. It's just, it's a Christian culture thing. For sure. Like a trunk or treat. For sure. Kind of funny. I remember going to one at some point. I would also go trick or treating, but I went to one that wasn't on Halloween. And then I remember telling like a friend at school or something 
And they were like, what? Is, what is that? Yeah. Where did you go I remember <laughs> I there were like a couple of years that I would do like a church thing on Halloween instead of trick-or-treating. And I would almost be like, for whatever reason, like low key embarrassed to tell my friends that I was doing it. Cause all right. my friends would be like, Oh, we're trick or treating it. And they would name like the cool neighborhood or whatever. And I'd be like, I'm going to the fall right. festival at long hollow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, I always had fun. It's just like kind of funny, but yeah, I don't know. Okay. I feel like Christians just have funny cult, like cultural. <laughs> you're, you're I feel like they have to just have like funny cult things. Well, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> it's a different podcast episode. I feel like Christians have weird sayings. They totally do. And it's not something that's ever taught. That's the craziest part of it to me. Yeah. It's just like you're raised around it and there and you just know it. Mm-hmm. So the main one that comes to mind for me is he is risen. He is risen indeed, right? It's a call and response. Yeah. What is that about? Why, like, why are we doing crowd work from the pulpit? <laughs> you yeah, know, like, Easter is like a team effort. It is. That one. It like, and it's like people's Instagram captions too. They'll just yeah. say like, he is risen indeed. Yeah. Where did the indeed come from? Why is Where that so required? And it's like, oh, well, like you were in the family group chat this year, but like my family will do that in the group chat where like someone will send he is risen and then Nell says he is risen indeed. And if you don't, no one's going to say anything, but they all know you didn't say it. That's one of those things where like it's always felt weird to me to say He is risen indeed. Because when the hell else am I going to say those words? Yeah. (laughs) You know? That's very true. There's things like that. I can think of a couple. Can I get an amen? Yeah. And I think that one's passed out of church. Yeah. People say it now, like, ironically, (laughs) which is funny. And I am for that. But can I get an amen used genuinely? Kind of hits different. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, sorry. hey, man. Similarly, if you were in like a non-denominational, like kind of progressive church, you didn't yell out amen when the pastor said something good. You'd go, mm, that's good. <laughs> Did I just unlock a, mm, it's good. Yeah, come on. No, yeah. Do you remember well, that? It's like, come on. Yeah, it's, it's the, oh, it's not the come on. Come on. <gasps> Let's go. And it's always like, it's okay. I don't know if this is how it was at your church, but like it would be like after small groups or whatever, there was like the late service and everybody goes to like the 11 o'clock service after your 10, 15 small groups. Anyway, so the youth pastors are all kind of sitting in the front row with their families and they're the ones that are like, come on, come on. (laughs) <laughs> they're just like like the crowd starts stirring yeah, and it's like, like oh, one person says come oh, on and then there's like a grandma in the back that's like mm. Mm. yeah mm. it's a mm. <laughs> and then there's probably an old dude somewhere that's like he's like looking around <laughs> seeing it and he's like hey, amen yeah like even my parents like my dad yeah he'll be like yes yeah <laughs> like and i get it, it. it's, it's like always a the good like word but like for sure. It, <laughs> for me, so I went to a, a really big church and when I was in middle school and the youth group was led by the college like discipleship school that they had. And so it was all these kids that were basically in like pastor school and they were all the leaders, all the small group leaders. So they were, it was like half youth and half like wannabe youth pastors and so it was like you had like a hundred into like 23 year olds that were all like mm, that's good let's go let's come on go. no i can't it's almost like <laughs> and you I, know if, that pastor's like feeding on it too yeah no i was gonna say the pastor up there his head's just inflating yeah <laughs> he's so big and he'll go he'll he'll give it a moment of silence too he'll be like He'll kind of give a look like yeah, in that yeah, direction yeah. Like, just to like let it stew mm-hmm. a little bit. <laughs> Pause for dramatic effect. It's like when Ryan Seacrest would be like, and the person leaving us tonight is. 
Monica Combs. <laughs> you know, like it's yeah. the same vibe. But for a pastor. But it's also like kind of reminds me of when you're watching a sitcom and a, and a, a guest appears. <laughs> like Disney comes. Channel. Man. No, somebody comes in. They're like, "What'd y'all say?" And it's like, and everyone's it's like, like a big, that is exactly person, what it is. They sit there and they just like kind of look, like give a smirk, like they yeah. know they knew that that was like. The it's like not to get. the camera, I'm on but the edge it of should be right now. I'm like. This is so yes, funny. Yeah, but that's that's what I picture when the come on start coming. The preacher's like. Because then, like, once the first come on happens, there's another one somewhere else, there's another one somewhere else. People start clapping, yeah. you know? There are occasions where people will clap. Has that ever happened? They just, like, round of applause in the middle of a sermon because, yeah, like, the word sure. is just that good. And, like, they'll just kind of, like, let it settle before they keep talking. And they're like, amen. And now, anyway, like. It's so weird. It is. like, And it's, like, I, the funny thing is it shouldn't be weird because it's the same. Like, people will probably be mad about this, but, like, being a good pastor in the modern sense of like being a preacher i guess Mm -hmm. there's a certain matter like amount of showmanship that's required in order to be engaging you gotta be able to like connect with the people right like you gotta capture someone's attention and hold it for at least 25 minutes some churches 45 minutes depending on what it is so that takes a skill and art of itself but it is showmanship right in all other forms of showmanship there is like that type of response but it's so different in a church because it's like you it shouldn't be but you know it is yeah yeah it's just it's just kind of funny like i get it I do and too. i i get how some like sometimes it's just a good like whatever the preacher's saying is just like really hitting home yeah. and you're like mm. felt that come on Exactly. But yeah, that's just funny. I thought of another like saying or just like, it's more of like a phrasing that people use like in prayer. Bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies. When would you ever talk like, that's have you so seen those true. memes? It's like, Lord, please bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies. And it's like the food and it's like <laughs> hot Cheetos and like a hot dog with God knows what kind of meat in it. it and like, is. And it's like God in heaven, like looking down like, yeah, it's like whatever the church w- could figure out how to feed a hundred people on a dollar each. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's really funny. I hadn't thought of that. The, uh, I mean, there's so many we could do that come down to like prayer things, like people that use. We joke about it how we use "like" as a filler word, but like the, the people Christian who volunteer way is to father. pray, it's always people who volunteer to pray, the ones yeah. that just love to do it. But like, the, the filler word is father. Yeah. And father, Always. just please just bless us as we go about our day, father. And father, we love you, father. You know who we're, some of the, you know who yeah, we're talking about. Some of them use Jesus mm-hmm. or God or. Mm-hmm. Don't say it. Daddy. No. But we've all heard it. I'm telling you one time. Somebody, you've been somewhere and they said, bow your heads with me. Hi, Daddy. Daddy, we just want to thank you so much for today. For this group gathered here, Daddy. And you're like, but you can't do anything about it. Yeah, because, but you know, you you make eye contact with somebody, somebody else who thinks it's weird. You do one of these where you're like, like, your head is down, you're looking down, and then you hear Daddy, and you go. (laughs) No, I'm telling you, I had... And it only gets funnier the more you make eye contact with someone. There was like a Bible study in my middle school. Some some kids started a Bible study, and so I would go to it. They're real Christians. during lunch. Yeah, well, they might listen to this. I'm you sorry. can't say that. They started a Bible study during lunch, and we would go. And I just remember one time a girl offered to pray. Oh. She was already a little quirky, whatever. Yeah, but she was ready. She she was feeling she was the like, spirit. I'll pray. I'll go ahead. And we were like, okay, everybody pray your heads. And there's like, you know how sometimes when somebody who's about to just like spit fire in their prayer, like <laughs> they take a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, you gotta think like, about it. There's a silence. And she just goes, Daddy, thank you so much for this day. And just, she just like went off and I was like, are we going to ignore the elephant in the room right now? <laughs> the absolute daddy in me the at, room right me now? Me at 12 years old knew that was weird. It's like, we we cannot keep doing this, you guys. We cannot <laughs> keep calling him this. Mm, something. I did the math and that doesn't add up. Do you remember that song? There's a Christian song. I don't know if it's by like Big Daddy Weave or Jars of Clay. I don't know. But do you remember it was like, 
there was a line in it that was like, I love you, daddy. Please tell me you know what I'm talking about. I don't. I will say that's the quintessential CCM like melody right there. Yeah. That was good. That was, and that's, I have to find it for you. That's catchy as hell. Even as a, even as a kid, I think it was like, that was kind of like an echo. It was like, you're God the father. I love you, daddy. And I just remember like as a kid listening to that and being like, why are they calling him that? (laughs) You know, I always thought the name Big Daddy Weave was weird as hell. I still think that's weird as hell. Well, for sure. But the fact that I was eight and was like, "Mm, uh -uh." it's just it's kind of it's kind of honestly like I imagine like your friend Andrew Van Wert, if he were to have like a Christian, he'd be like Big Daddy Van Wert, you know, (laughs) you know, I feel like that's like, like, I kind of feel like it's it's a humorous thing. And so I kind of respect that he did yeah. that because his name is mike weaver yeah he calls himself big daddy we- that's hilarious that's so funny yeah because it does it sounds like something that was a joke right like they laughed be... about it and they were like we're gonna make this the name though for real yeah 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 it sounds like sounds like he wanted to be like a christian weird owl like it sounds like a parody name it doesn't mm-hmm. sound like he's gonna write legitimate songs about god he sure as hell did but he do they're bangers yeah, absolute rippers for sure. It's kind of all I got. I think I've yeah, honestly, Christians enough for one day, myself included. It's funny, sure. guys. You can laugh. You can laugh. It's funny. Here's the thing. I've done all of those things. I've been you have the not guy- called him daddy. Okay, yeah, I haven't done that. But pretty much everything else. Time in- of the episode where Cooper comes in. He says, "I heard you he guys in yakking with, for with too long." Fighting words. He's he like and teeth. And teeth, for sure. All right. Well, this was, I had some I had a fun time. This was a good one. (laughs) This is freaking funny. I needed, I needed a good laugh after the day I had. So yeah. Thanks for tuning in if you did. Yeah. Hopefully no one took offense to this. I like, I like to think we're all on the same page. We all have the same humor. For sure. It's all in good fun. All right. Well, Cooper's about to chew our cords, so we got to get a move on, but Thanks so much for listening. If you want to keep up with our podcast, feel free to follow us on Instagram at WDYM pod or on TikTok at WDYM podcast. We got to get on our TikTok game, but like we say every week. Yeah, we'll get there eventually. Mm-hmm. You enjoyed this episode. Be sure to give us a follow on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on, as well as give us a little review, a little rating, perhaps. Could would help dope. us out would be pretty dope and i think that's it yeah that's everything all right we will see you guys next time bye bye